episode two. In this episode, we will be creating custom warps and writing them to disk. Or the console, I guess. Uh, so if it's the, if it's either one, uh, we'll say us uh, system dot out print line, or you can type sys out and a control space. Uh, at least in Eclipse, I don't know anything else. And we'll say uh, entity isn't a or not entity sender isn't a layer. Uh, okay. Now, if the sender is an entity of a player, we will set player, um, and we'll do, uh, we'll cast sender as entity player sender. Um, then if, uh, if this is remote, then we'll do our stuff. Um, so first, we'll want to um, actually create a warp. That's a good place to start, I guess. Um, so unlike, if you've ever uh, made a bucket plugin, which I'm assuming is why you're watching this, um, they have a special config you can use. Um, and it's pretty versatile. There's a lot of really cool things you can do with it. This, however, as far as I know, isn't the case with Forge. Um, the easiest way I found to make a uh, config file is to be to do it completely custom. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, so if we are creating a warp. I will say if args zero. So that's saying if the first argument uh, after the command uh, equals ignore case uh, set, sure, uh, then we will create a warp. So let's say create warp. Uh, and then we'll say args one. Sure. Uh, and args one would be like the second. Uh, okay, so then we'll go uh, here and say uh, private void gate warp uh, string name and then you no. Know, so you would be able to create a warp for someone else while also say entity player uh, and three dots. That works. I don't think this to be. Uh, the reason I put the three dots is to make this uh, a kind of an array. Um, it makes it so. You can have as many variables as you want here, either zero or 13. So, yeah. Uh, okay. So let's just say if player dot length is equal to zero, two equals, then we didn't specify a player. Uh, actually, well, yeah, that works. We could also set if player equals no. Yeah, that works better. Um, so if we didn't specify a player, then we're assuming it's just going to be ourselves. Um, okay, so we will... Uh, let's see. I'm kind of going off the top of my head here. Uh, so... We will get the where they're standing, I guess. So block pot that this is a try cat probably. We'll get the position. So block pause pause uh, equals new block pause. And we'll import that, which I think it already did. 
and then we'll have to get the x, y, and z of the player. Uh, so we'll do that double uh, x, y, z. Then the x is equal to. Actually, I'm gonna do it here. X is equal to uh, get player dot get uh, get this dot get x. Actually, we don't even need this. We can do yeah. just in case we need this. But okay. Actually, we won't even need this. We'll do that. Um, and we want to get everything else. So let's get the Y and the Z, place this with Y, and replace this with Z. Control Shift, Control Shift, F to format, S to save. Okay, now that we got the X, the Y, and the Z, Let's sure. Let's create the warp. Um, okay. Anyway, so we'll probably. Oh yeah, I forgot the uh, the player is actually. In this case, it would not be an entity player. Uh, so, entity player, it would actually be an entity player MP, because that variable stores the, uh, the player. Uh, so, let's change this to actually player in. Let's call this player equals entity player MP get player. Like so, and import everything, and then we'll place this with this. <laughs> uh, it would actually, I believe, give us an error saying it couldn't find certain variables and stuff. Uh, so yeah, there you go. <clears throat> and then we'll want to also get the player's dimension. Well, dimension there. Uh, so this way you can also warp in between dimensions. So let's say warp uh, in dimension, because the dimension in this case is an integer, uh, would equal, oops, that is not how you type, air dot uh, get entity world uh, dot, provide, dot provider. Uh, and then dot get dimension. Okay. And then we'll have to. <laughs> uh, okay, then up here, uh, we're going to create something called a hash map. Uh, so this is like, uh, it's also known as a dictionary in some uh, languages, but Create private static hash nope uh, map and then inside of this map we'll have uh, the name so it's a string and then we'll have t uh, another variable that has two more variables so we'll create an n yeah, entry uh, and then this will have a block pause and an integer. Yeah. Leave that all the work. Let's call this warps. Uh, and we'll have to import a few things. And we'll have to initialize this. So we don't... Okay, so map from java.util.maps. Like oh, there we go. And then entry from. Uh, the first one, so com.google.com and dot. Oh, no. Uh, hold on, let me just see where that's actually from. 
Oh, duh. It's actually from... Oh, I have to put this manually, aren't I? Just from this dot entry. Beautiful. <clears throat> That's sometimes annoying. Okay, so equals new hat half map and port that. Um, and you don't even have to put anything there because it's already there. Um, okay. So now that you have your hash map set up, two of those there. Um, you are all set. And let's go down to create warp. And let's say, just looking at my notes. Okay. So we we'll want to check to see if uh, the warp has already been created. So it's already saved. Uh, so let's say if uh, warp dot warps dot get name dot oops. Damn it. If this doesn't equal no, um, then that means that the warp exists. <clears throat> and in that case, you will want to overwrite the warp. Um, so we'll say warps dot replace name with the value. Um, so in this case, it would be a new abstract map dot New abstract map dot simple entry. Um, what? Hold on. Anyway. Okay, that was annoying. And then for the first entry, we'll want to put the block pause. Um, so actually, I did mean to put that up there. So new block pause pause equals new block pause. And we'll put X Y Z. And then for the first entry, we'll put pause. For the second entry, we'll put the dimension, or dimension ID, actually. <clears throat> so, there you go. And if the warp does not exist, we'll pretty much do the same thing. So, else... Actually... We'll just do warps dot, dot put name. Really, really don't want to type that out again. So there. Um, and then after all of this, we'll send the player a message. So I'll make an easier way to do this. I will go down here and say public for static, uh, void, send message, we'll put in ob object message, and it's not going to be just a string, so, and then we'll say get player dot send message new text component string. It will send a message plus a string. There. <clears throat> um, okay, so now if we want to send the player a message, all we would do is send. Okay, get rid of the static there. Um, we would do send message. 
and then you send like a message. And if you want it to be a certain color, we'll say something like text formatting short dot. Let's say green plus. And this is why we have it as an object, not a string, because it is not purely a string. Um, <clears throat> so we'll send a warp created and then plus text formatting dot gold plus oops, name. So it'll say warp created, and then here we'll say warp overridden. Okay. <clears throat> uh, and then after all of this, uh, after it's written to the map and everything like that, we'll want to export it. Uh, because if we don't export it, uh, if you were to, for example, log off the server or save and quit out of the single player, um, it wouldn't it wouldn't actually save your warps. You'd have to create them all over again. So let's create a separate method for that. Let's call it export. Right below here, we'll make the method public uh, void export. And it doesn't need any parameters or anything. So R. And then we'll say uh, Yeah, let's get let's go for a for loop, I suppose. Um Okay, so the way that this is going to work, maybe it's slightly confusing, um, but for it to be able to save it properly, I found that this is the best way. Um, okay, so we'll want to create a string array, it's a basic array, not like a list array, um, of the warp string. So this is, all of your warp information in a nice uh, readable language and we'll create a new string array with the size of warps dot size okay and then we will uh, do a for each loop so for string uh, we'll call this name in warps dot Key set. Uh, so the key set is basically uh, the value, uh, the the key, so the name of the warp um, is what a lot of times is referred by. Um, this is why it's also called a dictionary um, because everything's referred by the first variable, and once you have the first variable, you have the second, uh, the value of the first variable, which can be a lot more. Uh, kind of like you have a word and the definition of that word. Uh, that's why it's called dictionary. Uh, so now we will <clears throat> have to get the uh, the x, y, and z location again. So we will make that as an int uh, because we set it as an int up there. Um, so we'll say int. And the only reason we had it as a double here is because uh, block pause takes doubles. Um, but it converts over to integer as well, um, especially because Minecraft takes integers as block positions anyway. <clears throat> uh, so uh, int x, y, and z, and those will again equal. Uh, yeah, whatever. They'll equal works dot get name. Uh, dot get key, which is a block pause if you saw, dot get x. Um, I'll do that again just to show you the, uh, the 
text components warps dot get and see this returns the entry which has the block position and the dimension inside of it and we get the name of course and then dot get value would return the dimension but we want to get dot key which returns block pause then dot that now you saw that because I did go a little fast last time then Z there you go hmm. uh, and then we'll want to get the dimension so in dim well, dimension and then this would equal warps dot get name dot get value okay. and then we'll want to add it uh, to this so actually what I'll have to do is create an index so int index equals zero zero and let's go here warp string index equals and this is where we'll do the formatting so name is first then we'll do plus and then a colon uh, the colon is how we will separate everything so there's that and plus x colon and plus x and plus base and we'll do some y colon plus uh, y <clears throat> then we'll do uh, z colon actually I don't want spaces here uh, okay so z colon plus z and then we'll want to get the dimension so let's just call this world because it's easier to understand and we'll put dimension Oops. plus dimension there we go okay now that we've added all of that we'll want to increment uh, index up to one index plus plus okay uh, now we'll want to actually export what we have just written uh, so now we we'll want to create another method uh, method that will actually write everything uh, so yeah let's create that and this is just a boilerplate um, thing that I write for a lot of my programs uh, so public void text writer and this will take in a string name and yeah, that's it for now um, actually yeah it'll also take a uh, entity player dot 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 god we can do it this player in. Okay, so now we'll say if player in equals null, which means we haven't specified that it's a different player, we will just create it for the basic player. Um, so we want to create a few variables up here, uh, private uh, buffered writer EW um, and then we'll want to create a private buffer come on and RW oops uh, BR element import that with control shift O and we'll also want to get the location of location of where we want to uh, put it so we'll put a private ring uh, and we'll call this the file name 
And this is the temp name, actually. Uh, so, whoops.conf, for example. This is just so something goes wrong and has something to back up on. And then we'll create another one called file location. This is not temp. Uh, so we'll put it in the config folder. And then in there we'll put it in the warps folder. Uh, let's actually end this. Uh, and if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say the config folder and then that, I'll show you. So if we go to percent app data percent, and then let's say we go to this uh, under config. So the this is like the config folder. Um, and then in here, uh, let me show you what I did. In here, you'll have like the folder. So it'll be called like warps. You go in here and you'd have all your warp stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, if we go down. Uh, so under here, oops, right. yeah, under here, we will uh, start, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll start writing stuff. Okay. All right, so we will create the files, uh, variable, so file f equals we file and then we'll put the file location here. We'll import that, it'll be under java io.file. Uh, and then try create a try catch. Uh, if f.make ders or directories uh, and plural, um, you'll want to just say there it is. So give a little message saying warp file created. And, and this is more for um, debugging. So if like, it doesn't go the way it should be, you'll know. And get the absolute path. Let's just catch this. Uh, so you'll catch a Oh, they would actually throw anything. Let's just put an exception. Just have it catch everything. Uh, and we'll just print the stack trace. Moment stack trace. Um, that's just because I can't think what it actually will put out. So I'll have to catch everything else. Actually, we don't need else. It's just fine. Uh, okay, so once that's done, uh, after here, we'll say the file name is equal to uh, the player's display name. And that is a string. So we'll say get player dot get display name. Uh, string, then plus underscore, and then we'll set it to, uh, let's say, uh, the world name, uh, or the server name, I suppose. Uh, but because this file will actually be uh, located on, so if it's a server, it'll be located on the server's directory. Um, if it's like a client save file, then it'd be located on the client side. Uh, that just makes it easier. I like it this way. Um, okay, so get player dot get server dot get folder name dot conf. There. So this is essentially it's going to be uh, so like the save fold the save name of the file. Um, so like if you have a uh, save game that's like New World or something, it'll be your Minecraft username 
underscore newworld.com. Or if it's on a server, it would most likely be world. So, because servers, uh, main folder is usually called world. Excuse me. All right, then we'll create another try catch. So try, right away. And I know, actually, yeah, yeah let's just throw a catch in there. Uh, so, I actually didn't mean to put that, but what I wanted is a finally. Um, so this will happen after uh, everything happens. Rather, it uh, catches an error or it doesn't. And we want to check to see if BW does not equal null. So we'll want to check to see if it's closed or if it hasn't closed. Then we'll close it. Uh, this is because it should automatically close, but some reason sometimes it doesn't, and it can create nasty little uh, memory leaks uh, and errors that are really hard to fix unless you just simply crash your computer. Uh, so bw equals new buffered writer, uh, and then this inside will have a new file writer inside this we will have the file location plus the file name uh, and we do not want it to append uh, the file uh, so this basically states like do you want to add to the end of the file or do you want to just overwrite the file every time uh, we want to overwrite it because if we didn't, we would have a lot of duplicates in there. Um, and it would be hard to uh, either remove a warp or replace a warp. It would just add and it would crash if you tried to use one that had duplicates. So there. Uh, okay, and then we'll say if the, um, what I call it, name, if the name, uh, that dot is empty. So if it is not empty, we want to write the text. Okay. You know what? I'm going to rename this also to text because it's easier to think about. So if you do uh, Shift Alt R, uh, you can at least in, again. Uh, eclipse, you can refactor something, and I'll call this text, and it'll change in all instances. Uh, okay, so that works. Uh, so if not, just do nothing. So actually, I can get rid of these, nothing's doing anything else. Um, add something else. Let's call it uh, Boolean. New line. Hold on. <laughs> uh, this will basically be saying, like, we'll make this true if we want to make a new line. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if I'll use that, but it's good to have uh, just in case. Uh, because blank lines can actually be kind of an issue if there's nothing there. Um, okay, so if do line is true, then we'll want to do bw dot new line. Again, really doing that. Force of habit, I suppose. Uh, then we'll want to flush everything out, which means it just completely exports everything. And of course, oh, that's right. I don't need this. Because let's put up here rows uh, I O exception. Yeah, let's put it here. Um, 
this makes it so every time you want to run this commit uh, this command, you'll have to put in a try catch. Um, it's better this way, so it's a lot easier on debugging things. So there we go. Um, that should be good. My, why my mouse is jittering? Um. Yeah, all of that should be good and it should create the file. And okay. Now, after the for loop on the export, we will uh, text writer. We will export the text. Okay. So in here, we'll do uh, arrays dot to string and we'll throw in the array warp string uh, but we'll want to replace a few things so the way that it is uh, formatted there's commas and brackets uh, so we we'll want to replace uh, let's do first the brackets so the beginning bracket we'll want to replace that with Nothing, so blank. Place. And then the end bracket will also want to replace with nothing. And then at the very end, uh, there is a comma. Uh, so we'll want to replace the comma and the space after it. I'll want to replace that with a new line. So there's that. Um, and actually, now that I'm thinking about it, we don't need a new line character here because we're putting one there. And we'll have to throw this into a try catch <clears throat> with an IO exception at the end. Um, now, just for testing purposes, I use this, uh, but if you were to ever, when you produce this, you'll want to replace the stack trace with maybe a custom message or something, or add a custom message in the stack trace. So failed to, that was, no, we didn't actually have to throw it, don't go doing that. Um, so that works, and we would have to get rid of this. Okay, now that is all, uh, it's exporting everything, and it should be fine. 